I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Folks, these days it takes a pretty special quadcopter frame to get me to make a review video of just a quadcopter frame. Uh, I'm really busy, and so if I found a frame that was interesting, I would probably try and work it into a build so I get the most sort of bang for my time. But recently I was sent a quadcopter frame that I thought had just enough about it that I made me go like, oh, that's pretty cool, that it made me want to make a video just about it. And that's what I'm going to show you today. Stay tuned. Here's the frame then that was so impressive <laughs> that I wanted to make a review video just about it. It's the iFlight TransFrame X5. Now normally when I do a review of a frame, I'll start with all the pieces and I'll put it together and I'll talk about the frame as I put it together. But in this case, I'm going to do it backwards because there's, there's something about the way this frame goes together that I kind of want to save till last. So let's just take a look at what kind of a frame it is. And you can see here it's uh, it's got a really good sort of balance. I like frames like the um, the Owl RC Dragon. That's the frame I made the video about a while back where it was like, why does Joshua Bardwell love this frame so much? Uh, and one of the things I like in a frame is a good balance between being roomy enough that you don't have to work too hard to fit everything in. And if you look at some of the frames I built, like if you go way back, I did a build of the, the Mixuko from uh, from Shendrones. And frames like that, you have to struggle to fit everything into the stack. You have to squeeze it all in, wire it up. There's no room to, it really requires a lot of thought and planning. Uh, whereas frames like this, they give you just a little bit more room to work with, a little bit more room to spread out, while still maintaining the sort of centralized weight that gives good handling. I always like to give credit to the people who did things first, and the first frame I can think of that this really brings to mind is the QAVX uh, by Luminaire. Uh, that was the Sharpu sponsored frame, and in fact, the camera, the camera pod design here really reminds me of his, although it's not exactly the same. Um, that was the first frame that seemed to have this kind of geometry, where it got away from. I mean, if you look back, you got the blackout and then the alien, right? And they're kind of a long of body and, and the alien called itself a, a pure x or an, an, a true x frame but the body was still pretty long and then if you go to something like the qavr the qavr started to kind of shrink down the the main body right and then you got things then, then came like the krieger and the shrike and those pure x you know build up pod style frames and then we started to see frames kind of like this where we've got a relatively uh, compact body it's not it's I don't know it's a low deck it's kind of a low deck but again still with enough of that room to spread out so I really dig this style of frame now I am not qualified to judge the quality of the carbon like in terms of its it's the lay of the carbon, the strength of the carbon. It would take somebody, a, a carbon expert, to do that, and I'm not that. But cosmetically, at least, I can tell you the carbon is very nice. It's very smooth. It's got a slightly beveled edge. Uh, I really like that they've got these little st uh, studs here. This adds just a little bit of protection and an impact uh, for the motor bell because it just slightly reduces the chance that the motor will take a whack against something hard. It also is very, they did it in a way that looks very nice as well. Another thing that really stood out for me as a nice cosmetic touch is the standoffs have this um, dumbbell design. They're nice, they're smooth, they look nice. I don't know, it gave a real nice touch. Here on the underside, the screws are countersunk. Uh, it does mean it's going to be a little harder to find spares. Like, I don't know, I have a whole drawer full of M3 screws left over from other builds, but I don't have a whole bunch of countersunk ones. Uh, but it does have a practical as well as a cosmetic benefit. Uh, I've scratched the crap out of the trunk of my car, like putting my quadcopter on it, and the motor screws, you can't see those, the motor screws and the standoff screws and the frame screws have, have scratched it up. I know I could just put some of those rubber pads on there. I, anyway, it's nice that they're not sticking out down there to scratch stuff up, and it looks nice if nothing else. I really dig the way they've designed the GoPro cradle. There's nothing revolutionary here. It's just simple and it works. Kind of like, remember when everybody just used a chunk of foam cut into a wedge and a battery stra strap? Yeah, right, that worked. I mean, we all have 3D printed nonsense and that's cool too. But in this case, 
is basically just a cradle that the GoPro will sit in and the strap will go around it. Very simple. You know, you compare it to something like the Armitan Chameleon, which I love the Chameleon and I love the front end on the Chameleon. There's so much to like about it. But there's, I also find something really appealing about the simple, you know, just here, just there's nothing complicated or just very simple and it works. Now, let me get to the cool thing that made me want to review this frame and in addition to all the nice things I've already said about it. The one, th the one thing that sort of tipped me over the edge and to do that, I'm going to have to take it apart. So let's pull some screws out of here. And there you go. That's all the screws and standoffs from this frame and it's still held together. So it comes apart. We've got these slots here in the bottom that the side plates go into and the bottom plate comes off. That's pretty straightforward. But the side plates and the top plate actually fit together in a really clever way. So you can see right here that they slot together and likewise, here in the back, they slot together so that, so I have to actually push this in and then push it back to get it to come off. And that's really slick. It means that there's more than just screws and standoffs holding the top plate and the side plates together and giving rigidity. So we've got this slot here in the top plate and this slot here in the side plate. And the way they go together is Yep. So that's the side plate's gonna slide in here. And then the top plate's gonna come to the inside here and come forward and seat in. You can see right there. And when they come together, it's actually really it's really clever. How this goes together. I'm really impressed with it. And then you add the screws and standoffs and it gets even stronger. Uh, like for example, this horizontal standoff keeps this from moving inward and separating here. And likewise, of course, that's going to go into the bottom plate and keep it rigid. So it all just kind of locks together. I really dig it. Another thoughtful touch that iFlight added that really attracted me to the frame was up here on the top plate. They've given you just a little bit of side plate protection here. So uh, I think what it's intended for is that you'll mount your receiver up here. And that saves you having to try and jam it in the stack somewhere. Just again, that just a little bit of extra room to expand. But a lot of times this top plate space would have just gone wasted. Uh, you certainly aren't going to put a battery here. And what else are you going to do? But they saw that there was a potential use for that and, and gave you a little bit of extra protection here. So you could put something up there if you so desired. Well, there it is. It's the iFlight Transframe X5. Uh, at first glance, it might look like, well, oh, not a bad QAVX style frame, but uh, upon closer look, I think it's got some very thoughtful little design touches that make it worth your consideration. Thanks to iFlight for sending this to me to review. Thank you guys for watching, and happy flying.